Hello and welcome to Clay to Canopy, the show where I attempt to make just about everything from the ground up. this small series to accompany my course that I'll be teaching in the spring and today we are going to talk about hanging devices. I did an earlier video on anchoring to anchor things on the wall. Uh, mainly this, this series was created to talk about how we treat our artwork, how we're going to display those pieces and oftentimes when it comes to sculptural pieces it can be an afterthought that you don't think about going ahead and installing the hanging mechanisms or how you're going to display it or we think of sculpture and we think of it only being sitting on a pedestal, but that's not always the case. There are galleries wanting wall pieces and in order to be competitive, sculptors do need to start adapting their work to maybe making things that could be hung on a wall. And that leads me to this video, which is going to be talking about third party hanging devices in this one. I am going to do a video where I talk about how to incorporate the hanging device directly into a ceramic piece of work. But for this video, I'm just gonna get into the third party hanging devices that you can purchase and install them onto an already existing completed work. This is not the best option, I might add. It is always, always, always better to consider the hanging device before you've made the piece. But things happen. Sometimes, you know, we weren't intentionally making a piece that was gonna hang on a wall. We've made it and went, wow, this would be really cool if we could hang it on a wall. So there are instances where, you know, you're gonna have to put in a third party mechanism. The reason why I don't normally recommend it, particularly with clay, this stuff is ridiculously strong. Putting something into the clay to do the hanging for you, it's made itself really strong. You've fired it, you've turned the thing into stone. If I'm making a wood piece, I'll incorporate a mechanism directly into the piece itself. You don't have that added obstacle of gluing something on. And it's the gluing something on that makes you dependent on the glue, you know, the quality of the hanging device that you're gluing onto it. Glue, no matter what kind of glue that you're using, it's not gonna be permanent. You can get some of the best quality glues ever, but over time, glue will wear. But anyway, we're here. We're at that point where you have to glue something on. Let's talk about the glues. I brought out some of what I keep here. There is one other glue that people in the ceramics community usually swear by. It's E6000. I tend to not use E6000. It is a strong jelly type of adhesive. It's clear. I'm a sculptor, so I'm not using just ceramic work. I do make a lot of things in ceramics, but I also make a lot of things in other materials. E6000, it's not a two-part chemical reaction. It comes out of a tube. It's an air dry type of situation. I prefer glues and adhesives that have chemical reactions involved. I will get by with PC7, which is actually my ideal one that I like to use, or you can go with two-part epoxy. You have two separate chemicals. When you mix the two chemicals together, a chemical reaction happens that creates the bond versus air drying type glue, which is what E6000 is. In my mind, the idea of a chemical reaction happening to harden the thing somehow feels like it's stronger. I've not done any tests, but I can say I've not had any issues with using either of these. I had one situation ages ago where I made a giant conveyor belt and a bunch of little ceramic sheep that I put on this conveyor belt. Each sheep was being held with one tiny nail on each nail. I I had just a tiny bit of PC7 and the sheep would go around the conveyor belt and it was built on a big table so it went down inside of a hole and flipped completely upside down up one side so it looked like they were just getting fed into this giant wolf's head. If I can find a picture of this thing I'll post it. My point is that the nail head was very small and the sheep were about this big and that tiny little nail head with a dab of PC7 kept it on there as the sheep continued to go up and around this conveyor belt. So I swear by PC7, it's great. The only downfall of PC7 is it's tinted. It will be a little bit gray and the epoxy is clear. The reason why I like the PC7 though is it's thicker. It's more like a putty 
versus the epoxy, which is thin. Both of them take overnight to cure, so it's something that you can't really test right away. You have to kind of glue up your thing, get yourself in a glued situation. And even though this epoxy says five minute epoxy, it's not five minutes on ceramics. Um, okay, another thing that is on my list to use is silicone. The beauty of silicone is that it is an incredibly strong bond. You can get it in multiple colors. You use it to seal up your doors, your windows. I've been using it as an adhesive to hold many different things for this dragon that I'm building. And it also can be removed with a razor blade if you need to. Over time, silicone is designed to eventually be replaced. I have ordered some really crappy hanging devices from Amazon. Thankfully, this one actually tells you how much, not really, one to 75 pounds on it, which doesn't tell you because it's assorted. Normally, if you don't buy the cheapy cheaps, you can get hanging devices that will tell you on the package how much weight each one will hold. Most of these are supposed to be tacked in or screwed into the piece. In this case, because we are applying them to ceramic, you're going to be relying on glue. This might be the same case if you're dealing with a sculpture that's made out of paper mache, but there's gonna be various materials where you might not be able to actually get a tack lodged into it. You'd have to use the glue. In that case, the weight is gonna be something you're gonna have to test out. I would recommend you going with something that would be a beefier hanging Device, something that was designed to do more weight than what you expect it to do because you're using a glue situation and not a tacking situation. If I was to put this onto this piece, when I tack into this piece, I have a nail that's going through the piece that would provide anchoring this direction. And then I don't have to worry about the pull. It's lodged into the piece in this direction. Because I'm applying this third party piece, to a ceramic piece, I have to use glue, and therefore the shear ability of the glue is not going to be as strong as say a tack that's going through. In this instance, you probably want to use a hanger that would be a little bit beefier. This is your basic fixture hanger kit. The common things you're gonna find at your hardware store or even online, and I just took some scrap pieces and I made divots and some that doesn't have it just to show what it would be in these different instances and in installing these things. This one would probably lend itself well to something like this. And the reason why I say that is because you'll need some room for the screw head to go in. This is your screw screwed onto the wall and this is your piece. This would give you a little bit of space for that screw head to kind of catch. This is designed to have that space already. So if you were to glue this on here, you'd have some room for a bit of a catch. This is a drywall screw. The shape of a wood screw is gonna be the same. And if you're doing a plywood backed wall, if you don't know what that is, go watch that other video on anchoring. If you're doing a plywood backed wall, you'll want to use one of these drywall screws or a wood screw, which would be the same head. And you'll need a little bit of extra give. If you have not put any kind of hanging mechanism or you don't have anywhere in your piece to get one, at the very least, tap a little hole. Or, you know, you could also take a diamond bit and drill a little bit of a hole to give you this recess. Otherwise, you're limited to putting a tiny tack on the wall or a small nail head and it's not going to be as good of a grab. This is your typical, probably most familiar, but this is pretty much designed for hanging pictures. That's why this is a picture hanging kit. It's not going to be as strong. This is probably your least strong hanger in the bunch. The next option is they have some of these hooks. In this instance, you'd be gluing this on and then this would provide this little hook here. That would be for some wire or something on the wall. Some old school hanging, they install just a wire on a wall and they have a bunch of things they can kind of hang. They're actually designed to be put on the wall. Normally you'd put the hook here and then you'd have like this D-ring tacked onto your picture or your painting. By reversing the order, putting the hook onto the ceramic piece, it gives you more contact area with the glue and allows for a stronger bond having this larger piece rather than doing it with just the small tab. So this is an option. You can screw this little hanger directly into the wall and then this can catch on it. Or you can glue this to the piece and use this as a catch for your screw head. None of these are ideal. So get the job done. And if the piece is light enough, you have a fairly light piece, you'll be okay. I would not recommend doing this for anything over 50 pounds. You can find the D-ring a lot larger. I would say, okay, maybe. If you are dealing with something 
that is of a higher weight, then I would highly recommend one of these two options. My absolute first choice is going to be this one. Wait for the plane, the plane. I forgot to mention, before we talk about that, one thing you want to keep in mind, none of these are flush, right? So if you have to install this on the back of a flat piece and you didn't give yourself even at the very least give yourself a grooved notch you are going to end up stepped away from the wall so you're not going to have a nice clean fit up against the wall when you hang this it's going to be sort of looking like it's tipping off that's not necessarily ideal which is why at the very least even a groove like this can at least get your hanger your screw head will have some room to get up and in there and this can pull it close to the wall because there's at least a trench say you have a three-dimensional piece i left this open so you could see the mechanisms anything like this i probably would go with this Right, so I can get this this on here and at least have something in here. This maybe would be a sealed piece in the front, uh, but I'd have an opening that at least I could somehow get some sort of hanger going on inside of it. Whatever hanger device that may be. Even that could at least hook and hold on to something. Back to other options. Now these you may already be familiar with. This is a keyhole hardware piece and this again could be screwed to something that's made out of wood or glued to any other type of medium. It does not have to be ceramic. The piece is already designed for the screw head to go in. You screw this to your piece. The screw head goes in and again it slips under and you can see this I didn't actually make this shell in this case I probably could put this over the hole and glue it in like this but again I'm gonna be off the wall slightly and have this little bit that's gonna be hanging in the back of the wall this gives you a nice strong hold this is why you would never want to just pop the screw in and just say oh I'm gonna hang it on this because this could easily just slip off right same goes with this this is not strong enough can easily slip off. Maybe if you put in a little lip here that this screw head could catch on, then that would be okay. Keyhole is an option. Install them and they have this little bit of a raised bit in the back that allows for the screw head to kind of go in there and float in the back. Ooh getting some rain some rain some rain and come in the option if i had to hang something third party i would go with cleating these are metal cleats this cleat would get glued onto your piece like so with this part hanging over this piece would get screwed onto the wall and then what happens is sorry I did that upside down upside down you're going to get glued onto your piece like this this gets screwed to your wall and then it can just slip in like this and boom this is a really, really strong hold. It's less obtrusive. It literally just started pouring out there. Um, this is probably not the best conditions to be doing a glue up in, but I'm gonna glue up some of these and we'll pit some of these glues against each other. Because these are chemical reaction type of things, you would be better off just using something that is disposable. I have a piece of plastic right here, but you could use a paper plate or something that you can just throw away afterwards. I recommend something flat. You're going to be trying to eyeball the measurements of each one of these before mixing them together. Because you don't want cross-contamination for the PC7, I usually take a separate stick for each one. My epoxy, this Loctite epoxy actually is in droppers. I don't even know if this is any good, how old this crap is. Oh, it's hardened. I might not be epoxy in anything. This one looks all right. I'm just gonna pick a couple things to glue with epoxy and a couple things to glue with the PC7. What you wanna do is you put a bead in, you want equal parts. So I'm gonna make, what is that? It's a little bit bigger than a pea. So you have the resin itself and a hardener, and this is going in the trash as soon as I am done with this demo. Because I don't really use this stuff. There we go. All right, pea size of each. Once you have what looks like equal parts of each, you can go ahead and mix the two. You don't want this stuff on your hands, so definitely wear some gloves. I'll glue this guy on with some epoxy. Again, five minute on ceramics is not really five minute. It's gonna need an overnight cure for it to actually hold on this stuff. So we'll do one of these, one of these. All right, that's that. Now let's go in with some PC7. It is a dark color. Again, we're gonna do the same where we take some of the one putty. And for this, I am going to use two separate sticks because I don't want to contaminate my putty. This is also old. It should not be this tough to get out. You want to eyeball what looks like about 50-50 and then you can mix 
One of the benefits of this being two different colors is that you can make sure you get a good mix by blending the two colors. By mixing these two things together, the chemical reaction starts to happen. In the case of the epoxy, it will heat up. Definitely don't want to be doing this with bare hands. Your epoxy can sometimes off gas. I have not seen that happen with this PC7, but I have seen it happen with the epoxy where it'll kind of start to smoke. If you're using a lot of it, be doing this in a well ventilated area so that you don't have to worry about that kind of thing. This is much thicker, but it's also colored. So sometimes people don't want to use this stuff for that reason. I'm going to save these two for silicone. Whoa, PC7, this one. If you are going to use these hanger, it is always better. I didn't talk about this. That's why I'm putting on two. I'll actually put only one on this one so I can explain why this one has two and this one only has one. You don't want to usually ever put just one. You usually want two points on a piece so that you don't have this swinging action when you go to do the install. You'll see what I mean after these dry. We're going to give these an overnight and then we'll be back to try and hang them. Two points are always better than one in the case of hanging. All right, I'm going to use silicone on these. A silicone gun. You do not need to buy a big silicone gun like this. I just am using a lot of it for another project, so I have one. A lot of times you can get a small tube of silicone. I don't know if you have too many colored options in silicone when you buy just the small tube, but silicone is kind of a one shot. They're not good at capping. Like you can cap it and save it, but only if you're gonna be using it within a couple weeks. I just got a screw sticking in it. So just keep that in mind. The smaller tubes are kind of like throwaway. Like this stuff, because they're two part mixing, once it's opened, I can keep it for a while. I mean, these have been sitting here for years, which is why it's hard. In terms of silicone, you don't wanna buy a big tube thinking I'll eventually use it. You might not because more than likely, it'll dry out before you get to it if you're only gluing a small thing, but it is cheap. You can get clear in the small tubes. Alrighty, all of this will sit and we will be back to take a look at how to hang these things. My hanging devices are dry. Unfortunately, I put these too high. I should have made them a little bit lower. You can go ahead and put your D-ring directly on your hanger or something similar. And this, come on now will just clip on to that hook. So I should have moved my backing piece a little bit lower so that you don't see the top of the head, but that's basically how it works. Testing out the two different glues, they're both really secure. I don't see any issues with either one of them. Yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of preference whether you want to see the color or not. I do prefer the PC7 in certain situations because you only need a little bit of that. Anyway, there's that. I have my screw in here for the little pronged one. That's it there. Test out the keyhole. Keyhole one is on there, but then also that has the cleat. So I've installed that cleat. This one, the D-rings. These are a bit of a pain, which is part of my other reason why I prefer putting the hooks onto the piece directly. Installing a D-ring, they can be pretty tricky. So I put in one screw here, but then I would do this and then kind of eyeball, okay, where's that other one gonna go? So I can measure, okay, it's over here. Pop in the second screw. And sometimes you're like trying to fish around trying to make it land. I really don't like the D-rings that much, but again, sometimes it's inevitable. Sometimes it's an aesthetic choice. Sometimes you want that look. These are seen a lot um, in hanging dishes on the wall. Another option is that picture hanging wire could be attached to any number of these. So you could apply it to your D-rings that are attached to them and hang. If a piece came in with D-rings on them and I was in the gallery trying to do an install, I would run a piece of picture hanger wire between the two. That way it would give me the full length of the wire to land my two screws. And it's a heck of a lot easier than trying to match up the, the D-hooks. From an installer's point of view, it's a pain to do it that way, and that's usually what we would do. All right, um, yeah, hanging devices. Different hanging, hanger, third-party hanging devices. I'm gonna call this video here. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so already, and I hope to see you soon.